take a step back. Let's start with this list iterate list iterator interface. This is the interface to be able to iterate it through any list. Okay. So I already wrote this for us. Um, these are the methods we're going to need to implement. We're, we're familiar with these from using um, iterators in the previous chapter. Here's next. Here's has next. Here's the add method. Um, adds an element before the iterator position, moves the iterator past the inserted element. Try to very clearly document the behavior. Here's the remove method. Removes the last traversed element. The method may only be called after a call to the next method. We're familiar with that from chapter 15. Set sets the last traversed element to a different value. You'll notice there is no has previous or previous because we're doing a singly linked list. So our iterator is only going to have next. Okay. All right. We're going to implement this interface as an inner class inside of the linked list class. And that's our linked list iterator class. The reason why we have this is code that uses our class can use the list iterator interface as the type of their variable, but we have to implement that interface like in a, in a, in a concrete manner. So that's what we're gonna do right here. We're gonna implement the list iterator method. So I'm uncommenting this. Now it doesn't compile because we haven't implemented all the methods yet, but we're gonna do that right now. All right, so let's think through what information does our linked list iterator need to keep track of? There are three things. It needs to reference, the iterator needs to reference the iterator's current position, where it's at. As we're going to see, that's insufficient. We also need to keep track of the previous node that we iterated over. We're gonna need this in order to implement the remove method. We also have to watch out for that whole concurrent modification thing that caused an issue for us. Um, we were getting, you know, those exceptions we studied in chapter 15. So we need to keep track of whether it's safe or not to remove elements. So we're gonna also add a private instance variable that's a Boolean called is after next. So if we have just called next, we're gonna set this to true. So we know if someone tries to call remove, that's okay. Um, but otherwise we'll know it's, it's not okay. So these are our three instance variables. Um, I wanna clarify a few things related to that. All right, so here's a picture of our linked list. There's three, at least three nodes in it. Here's our new list iterator object with previous position and is after next. When we create a new list iterator, it's going to refer to the front of the list. And so position will refer to the node. This is a change from chapter 15. In chapter 15, we could look at iterators in a more abstract way. If we were sketching elements in a linked list, we drew our iterators between the elements, right? I'd use that vertical pipe character to say, hey, the iterators between these two elements. That works out really concept conceptually, that works out well, because we know exactly where things are gonna get inserted. In reality, when we're dealing now with references and writing the code ourselves, we can't say an iterator is like between nodes, it has to refer to a node, okay? So the position element, or the position um, instance variable for our list iterator, it refers, the node it refers to, um, it refers to the node that was most recently iterated over, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. When we make a new list iterator, previous and position are both null. We haven't iterated over anything yet. The first time we call next, position refers to the node we just iterated over the node whose um element we just like returned with next okay. previous is still null because we've only called next once if we call next again position now refers to the second node because that's the one we just iterated over and previous refers to the one before that 
In terms of our model for chapter 15, we'd say the iterator is right here. It's right between these two nodes, but there's just, we, we can't do that anymore. Okay, so position refers to the node we just iterated over. Any questions about that before we start writing the code? Like that's a big conceptual change and an extra layer of complexity. Yeah. Uh, why do we care about the like two elements before and after? Excellent question. Um, we're, we're going to need that when we start removing notes. So we'll get to that in a moment. But we're gonna, if we didn't have that information, when we remove a node, we wouldn't be able to link back up our list. All right, let's see what the code looks like. Good news, the code is super simple. <laughs> it looks that way. Anyway, that was a very maniacal laugh. All right, let's, let's write a constructor. Um, so we're gonna create a new linked list iterator. So this is linked list iterator. Um, again, I just want to be, ex this is all done by default, but I like being explicit. I'm going to say position equals null. I'm going to say previous equals null. I'm going to say is after next equals false. It's initialized to those values anyway. I just want to be explicit about it. Remember, we can't use this here because this refers to the linked list class that we're in, not the linked list iterator inner class. So I got to leave out the this and the Java compiler is gonna figure it out. It's okay. All right. Let's write the code for next. Here we do have to write, well here, method header first, public object next. It returns a reference to the object, not the node, but to the element. Um, we do have some special cases here. What if we call next on an iterator and there is no next node. We gotta handle that. How do we check that? Well, we're gonna check by calling the has next method. If has next returns false, so if not has next, that's a problem. Throw a no, throw a new no such element exception. Let's look at the picture again. Couple different cases to handle. When we call next, if position is null, that means we're at the beginning of the list and we need to set position to the first node. If position is not null, we need to set previous to what position was and set position to the next node. Lots of references going on here. So let's see what that looks like. Let's do previous first. Oops. Let's do previous first. That's the easiest. Previous. Ah, previous equals position. If position is null, then we're just setting previous to null, that's fine. But if position isn't null, we're setting previous to be the node that we second most recently iterated over. We're calling next, so is after next is gonna be set to true. That's good, we gotta keep track of that. And then we do have a special case to handle here. If position is null, that means the iterator was at the beginning of the list. And so we're gonna set position to first. It's going to re now refer to the first element. That's the, or the first node. That's the node we just iterated over. Otherwise, if position is not null, we're going to set position equal to position.next. And then finally, we're going to return position.data. Again, we're not going to return position. We're going to return that node's data. This line of code is what really usually trips us up. Think about it, remember just with the assignment operator, we get the value of the thing on the right and then we assign it here. So yeah, positions on both sides, which is a little confusing, but this says, hey, grab the reference to the next node and now store that as change position to be that, okay? That's what we're doing here. That's the entire next method.
Poof. Let's try another one. Let's do has next. Public Boolean has next. We need to return false if there is no next node, true if there is. Um, we have a little bit of a special case here. We, so I'll kind of show you how I end up developing these methods. Usually I start off covering the generic case. So I would write a line of code that says return position.next is not equal to null, okay? If there is a next node, return true, otherwise return false. When you write code like that, here's the extra step you need to do. You need to look at each line of code you write and check on your own for potential null pointer exceptions. And what I mean by that is every time we're using something and then saying dot after it, if the thing before the dot could be null, we better handle that special case. So I ask myself, is there any way that position could be null? Oh, whoops, yeah, there is. If I have a new iterator, position is null. Or if I'm at the end of the, no, it's, that's really it. If I have a new iterator, position is null. So I need to handle that special case. So now I'm gonna go in and address this. I'm gonna say, okay, well, if position is null, let me handle this special case. Um, Either my iterator is at the beginning of a linked list and there are elements or the list is empty. I can just look at first. I can say return first is not equal to null. If first isn't equal to null, then my iterator is at the beginning of the list. I can call next on it. If first is null, the list is empty. There is no hot has next. So as you start writing these methods, which will start next week, not these exact methods, but related methods. Um, that's my suggestion, like handle the generic case first and then, and then focus on handling the special cases. What if I'm at the beginning of the list? What if I'm at the end of the list? What if this variable is null? Can this variable be null? Those are all the questions you have to ask. All right, that's it for has next, not too bad. Let's do add. Public void add one parameter, which is a reference to the element to add. Again, it's not a reference to a node, it's a reference to the element. Let's look at the pictures. All right, two different cases we're gonna do. What if our iterator is at the beginning of the linked list, okay? That means position is null. Here's the new node that we're gonna build. We're gonna make a new node. We'll put the data in it. We wanna insert this new node at the beginning of the list. If, pos if position is null, we can do that. When all is said and done, first, I drew these by hand, you can probably tell. First refers to this new node. The new nodes dot next returns to what was the first node. And position refers to the new node because the iterator is after the node we just inserted. So we've got to write the code for that. Let's do that first. Let's write the code for that special case. If position is null, we're at the beginning of the list. All right, that was a lot of links to update, but we already wrote that code. We just wrote the code. We called it the add first method. We'll just call that. If position is null, we just want to do add first. The add first method does all the right stuff with the nodes. All we have to then do is update position to refer to that first node that we just inserted. So that special case isn't so bad. Else, Let's look at the picture. What if our list iterator is somewhere else? What if our list iterator is referring to the node Harry? So that means we just iterated over Harry. We wanna insert this new node Juliet, meaning Juliet needs to be inserted between Harry and Romeo. What all needs to be updated in that case? Well, even more stuff. Four different steps. After, oops, sorry, 
four different steps. After we make the new node, we need to update the new nodes next to refer to Romeo, okay? How do we find that reference? Well, that reference is position gets us here, dot next gets us to Romeo. So position dot next is how we fill this in. Second link we need to do, Harry now needs to link to the new node. How do we get to Harry? That's just position. Third step, we need to update position to now refer to the new node because we just inserted it and the iterator needs to be after it. And then we need to say, hey, did we just call next? Nope, we better set that to false because we just inserted a node. All right, let's do all four of those operations. So first we need to make our new node and we need to initialize it. All right, step one, new node.next equals position.next. We do that link first. Okay, great. This line of code here is all about filling this in. Position.next refers to Romeo. We update here accordingly. Second step. Oops, in the wrong window, sorry. Position.next equals new node. This is fixing up the node links, so the new node is now in the list. That line of code is step number two. Position.next, that's the node re that has Harry. It refers now to this new node. Whew. Step three. Position equals new node. The node we just added is the one that we need to reference from the iterator. And then we better set is after next to false because we just added a node. We're no longer immediately after next. Let's try to remove a node. Let's look at the picture for that. Two, again, two cases. Special case, calling remove when we're referring to the first node. So we've already called next once. We iterated over Diana. We're now calling remove, so Diana's gonna go away. What has to be updated? Well, not too much. We just need the linked list to refer to the second node, and we need to update our iterator such that the position is null because we're now at the start of the list, okay? That's it, not too bad. So let's handle the special case first. So we'll go down here to remove, public, void remove, special case. Well, actually first error handling. If is after next is false, so if not is after next, we can't do a removal because we don't have enough information as we're going to see. We're going to throw a new illegal state exception. We're just emulating the behavior of the actual Java standard library linked list. 
if we try to call remove and we haven't called next, we get an illegal state exception. Now we can say if position equals first. So if we're removing the first node, what do we do? We just call remove first. And then we gotta set position to null to make it clear like our iterator is back at the head of the list. Well, what if we're not at the head of the list? In that case, let's say our iterator is referring to Harry because we just iterated over Harry and we're gonna call remove. That means the node that references Harry is gonna go away. So what needs to change? A lot more things. We need to have the previous node next refer to the third node in this list. We need to update position to refer to that previous node. And we need to uh, set is after next to false. We have a little bit more work to do. Note that previous also refers to this node. We can't update this because we don't know the node that becomes before that. So think about it this way. The previous instance variable is only valid when is after next is true. Otherwise, we can't trust its value. Let's see what this looks like in code. Not too bad. Previous.next equals position.next. That links in our example, the first node to the third. Position equals previous. That fixes the iterator. Yes, the value of previous is now invalid, but that's okay because we're gonna say is after next equals false. We're not gonna trust it. That's all it takes, not, not too bad. We've got one more method. We got time, we'll, we'll do our last method. This one's easy, public void set. This is the set method. So we're changing the value of the uh, element that's referred to by the node. Again, we have to make sure everything is valid here. So we're gonna check is after next. If that is false, we will throw that new illegal state exception. Otherwise, we'll simply say position.data equals element. We don't have to fix up any links. We're not changing any of our nodes. We're just changing the data referred to by the node. That's it. We wrote very little code today. If you go back and look at this iterator class, there is not much. Um, at all. However, the code is really complicated. Several years ago, like, like maybe the second year teaching this, I got so confused by writing this iterator that I spent the entire class period doing it wrong. <laughs> I came back the next day and, and I had to tell the class like everything we did yesterday for 50 minutes, all of it's wrong. We're gonna delete it all and we're gonna try again. Like it's tricky stuff. So my advice to you, just kind of let this settle in a day, like read through the code we wrote again. Um, look at the diagrams in the slides. They're in the chapter 16 slides linked on Canvas. That's what you wanna look at so it starts to make sense. It's gonna take some time. Um, this, is, this is complicated concepts, so. All right, we're almost out of time.